All right, hello everybody. I'm going to go through tutorial two. This is going to be a, um, a try. I have not recorded uh, going through a tutorial before, so you'll have to give me some feedback to let me know if this worked for you or not. Um, today, we're going to talk about lists, which are the key data structure in Mathematica. If you ever want to group data together, the object is going to be a list. Um, whenever you go through a tutorial, you can download them from the website and you should work through them at the same time. Um, play around with the inputs, try see what changes when you change the inputs. So when we are creating a list, um, and you want to do, create a list by hand, lists always have are surrounded by braces. So they're always surrounded by a left brace and a right brace. So um, if you want to, so remember when you want to uh, type into Mathematica, you make your cursor horizontal and you click. And now we've, we're in a place where you have a, um, where you have a, you're able to input things. So you put an open brace and we put one, two, three. There we go, close brace. Now this is a list. And for that to get into the computer to be evaluated, you remember you just shift enter. Okay, so um, let's say we wanted to create a list of coordinates two, one, three, three, four, two. Um, and we want to input it as a variable named coordinates. Well, so for, again, we go click below this cell to create a new cell, and we will create a list. We might think we want to use parentheses for coordinates, but because we're going to think of a coordinate pair or a coordinate vector of any length, as a list, we have to use curly braces for those. So in order to create this list, we do open brace two, one, close brace, open brace three, three, close brace, open brace four, comma two, close brace. And because we want them all to be grouped together, we need to put everything there in a set of braces as well. So this is our list, but now we want to be able to reference it later. So we will define a new variable, coordinates, to be equal to 2, 1, 3, 3, 4, 2. Um, and notice that right now the, the word coordinates is blue. And the reason why it's blue is because it's not been defined yet in the computer. So when we now do shift enter and we evaluate it, coordinates turns black because now it's defined in the system. And if we were to type in coordinates and do shift enter, it's now, re it's now saved in the computer until you close out all of your Mathematica windows. And then when, if you reopen this tutorial, it will not be defined. You'll have to go back and redefine it. Okay, so we'll learn how to plot coordinates on a graph later. Next, syntax. So um, you'll notice here that there's some arrows, these double arrows. I've created this notebook using a bunch of sections just so it's more readable. Um, if you want to open a section uh, here, you can click the double arrow. Um, the other thing you should notice is that on the right-hand side, there's a whole bunch of markings that tell about the cells. If you want to open or close something, you can double click on it and it will open or close that whole block. All right, so um, let's now talk about syntax. Uh, every programming language has special words um, that, that do things. Uh, most languages don't have too many special words. Um, but Mathematica has like tons. So um, these are called, we can call them commands, might call them functions. Um, in tutorial one, we saw plot. Plot was used to plot the graph of a function. 
Um, in Mathematica, there's a lot of them. You're going to see some of them over and over again, and some of them you'll see once and never again. Uh, when you start to see things over and over again, you should you should start to learn how they work. So when we're trying to learn how things work, then you need to know their syntax. So syntax corresponds to um, how a particular command works in in the system. So in order to talk about the syntax, you need to know what are the inputs, what do you send into the function to make it work, what comes out after you run it, and how do you get from the inputs to the outputs. Um, so I now uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to create some notes here on the side. This these might be notes that you would write down in a paper notebook as you are as you're following along with the tutorial. I forgot to do this for the lists, but let's let me write this down. So every every list has um, an open brace and a closed brace. And we should say, and you can you can nest as many, and nest as many uh, lists as you want. Want, or maybe I should say, the list can be as as complicated as you want. So what does that mean? It means that you can. Uh, they can have have as many entries as I can have as many entries as you want, and uh, the entries can be as complicated as you want. Um, including they can be lists, so this sort of leads to nested lists. So in terms of syntax, let's make sure that we're clear about what syntax means. So in terms of syntax, what we need to know is that we need to know what are the inputs, what are the outputs, and what's the rule. So let's go and work with a one of one of the, the simplest ways to create a list, and that's to use range. So range is used to create a list of evenly spaced numbers. Uh, range command has between one and three inputs, and the output is a list. So if you think about it, here's what I'm doing. I'm starting to talk about what the syntax of range is. The syntax of range is that it has some inputs, and it has some outputs, and the output is always a list. So what I haven't done yet what I haven't done yet is I haven't talked to you about what is what's the rule that gets you from the inputs to the outputs. Okay, this is a good place to talk about the structure of a command in Mathematica. Note that all of these predefined commands in Mathematica uh, start with a capital letter. Everything that's predefined in Mathematica has a capital letter. What that does is it lets you have a uh, use all all words that start with lowercase letters as human defined instead of Mathematica defined. I guess Mathematica, all the people working at Mathematica are human, but user defined things should all start with a lowercase letter just so you can com you can you keep track of what you made and what is predefined in Mathematica. Range is predefined in Mathematica. It's already showing up as black because it's defined in the system. And then every function, every command uses brackets. So we talked about braces, right? So lists use braces. And then commands use brackets, All right? And so it's going to be very careful. You have to be very careful about using braces in the right places and brackets in the right places. So. Um, range 10, uh, we have range 10, range 2, 10, and range 0, 10, 2. Here's when we put in one input, two inputs, 
or three inputs. So here's what the rule is. When there's only one input, so when there's only one number, the output is a list of integers starting at 1 and increasing all the way to n. So here we've started out at 1 and we're going all the way up to 10. Right, so this is for us mathematicians out there, we like starting counting at 1. For people who are used to computer science, they're used to starting counting at 0. They're of course wrong, but we have here that uh, any list is going to start with 1, and this is the first entry of the list. It's not the 0th entry of the list. We'll talk more about accessing parts of a list uh, in the next tutorial. All right, so when there's one input, we get the numbers from 1 up until that input. When there's two inputs, we start with the first number and we end at the last number, and it, it increases by increments of 1. And if we want to change what that increment is, then we put that as the third, uh, the third parameter that goes into the into the function. So when there's three inputs, m, n, and in the increment, then the output is the list of integers that starts at m, starts at zero, increases to n, ten, and incre increases in increments of two. So zero to two, two to four, four to six, six to eight, eight to ten. We're always increasing by two. All right, so let's try some examples. We, like I said, you should be always playing around with what's happening. So let's try to break it. Right? What would happen if we put in a negative number as an input? Hmm, range of negative 10. So what do we think is going to happen? Go up to what the rule says. Think about what the rule says. Apply the rule in your head. So when we apply the rule in our head, we say we want the numbers that starts at 1 and increases to negative 10. Well, if we do that, we don't get anything. Well, that's because it's not possible to start at 1 and increase to negative 10. So we get an output that is a list, but it's a list with no entries. So it's the empty list. All right, another thing to do. So like I said, you want to try things out and see what you can do. Range of 1. Think about it. Pause the video if you want to spend some time thinking about it. Range of 1. It's a list from 1 up to 1. So we should expect just the list 1. Um, range of 3, comma 4, comma 2 fifths. Um, well, we're going to start at 3. We're going to go up to 4, but we're going to go in increments of 2 fifths. So we have 3, 3 plus 2 fifths, 3 plus 2 times 2 fifths, and that's the end. Because if we wanted to go, we added another 2 fifths to this, this would be bigger than 4. So we have to stop at 4. So this is something new. This is something where if you're, if this 4 isn't like you you always get 4 at the end of your list. The second input is not always in your list. It's the upper bound. So once we get to this upper bound, we stop adding anything new to the list. Okay, here's something different. 100 down to 0 by increments of negative 8. Oh, so in this case, we're going down but that's okay because the increment is a negative increment. So we'll start out at 100, go down by 8, go down by 8, go down by 8, and keep going until we would hit 0, right? The next thing would be less than 0. And because it's less than 0, it doesn't get included in that list. Another thing you can ask is what happens if you want to um, if you want to have a range commands where you, let's say this is something you might want to do, is just to come up with a list that has the entries that you want it to have. Okay, so in this case, we have the numbers that go from negative 5 up to negative 2 by increments of 1. So what we want to do is create a range command. Um, we want to start out at negative 5, and we want to go up to negative 2. Um, but in this case, we want to increase by 1 each time, so we can either write this command, or we could write negative 5, negative 2, 1. So um, 
one thing you could say, this is saying that the range command is overloaded. As in, by putting in different types of input, you get range to do different things. And so in this case, what we're seeing is that you can write the range command in two different ways and get the same output. Because these are both starting out at the first number, going to the last number. This first one always increases by one if there's no third argument here. And then it's, or you can start out at negative five, go to negative two, increase by one, and that's giving us this. All right, and so let's do one more. What, how could we get this list? Well, in this case, list what we have is we start out, we have a range command. It starts out at 17, it goes up to 97, and the increments are 10. So this is then going to give that list. Um, so it looks like I've already spoken for 15 minutes. Let me take a break and we will uh, go back and start the second half of this tutorial. All right, thank you.